She woke up in the morning and said, Bloop. <laughs> I ain't it. I am a single mother. My forehead is massive, but my intellect is great. My shirt is dirty, but never mind that. I'm gonna utilize the money from the GoFundMe in order to buy a new black shirt, because this one's covered in sh Today, chat, we must discuss the bullshit. You understand me? So let's get active. Let's preface this conversation because I'm aware that there's some people that are down up in here that may be like, MTR, what the hell are you talking about? What have I ever done to anybody in my life to deserve this? I never did anything in my life to hurt anybody. Literally, a man asked me for my number. I said no, and he, he picked up a brick in front of so many men and was like, what are you gonna do? And I told all these men, like, yo, why is this man got a brick on my face? And he's he's holding a brick. And all these niggas is watching and nobody does nothing. And he hits me in my face and then they all just watch. And they let that nigga get in a car. How is this okay? This is what y'all doing to women? Now what is it that we're looking at right here? We're looking at a young woman that is in a hospital room. You can hear the beeping in the background who was complaining about a situation that she was involved in where she got hit with a brick, which is a force multiplier. Someone hits you with a brick, they intend on doing not just harm, but a lot of harm. You hit someone with a brick in the face and they might die. If not through the impact of the brick, but the impact of your back of your skull hitting the ground, it is a serious situation. What is it that we also are looking at right here? We're looking at a giant hematoma on the side of her head. Oh, sorry, I didn't I didn't click that button. How did how did that how did that get there? I don't I don't I don't quite know how this how this picture got up on the screen right now, but but it's but it's here right now. Um, what she uploaded, okay, and the cultural implications of what it is that she uploaded drives a narrative. The same way that Oprah directing, helping to direct or produce The Color Purple drove a cultural narrative. And I've argued that that cultural nar narrative has destroyed a component of the image of the black man today. So when we have these viral videos that drive a cultural narrative, it is absolutely necessary that we begin to speak about it and determine if it's right, wrong, or not, or if it truly should impact us, or not, okay? But let me say this, okay? I do not condone whatsoever the violence that is purported to us within this video. It's not a part of me, it's never been a part of my platform, I've never said that. In fact, I tell men to respond to situations in a stoic manner, okay? Life is not a game, life is not an action movie. You understand me? Respond as opposed to react emotionally. I know many of us have grown up without fathers. That wasn't me, that wasn't my story. I know from the deep seed within myself as I have to conduct myself a certain way as a man because I know that I am guilty until proven innocent. We don't know what happened in this particular story with this young woman, but what I do know is, is that if it is true, she should not have been hit with a goddamn brick. All right, she should not have been bricked. Don't be bricking bitches because they turn you down, okay? Let me just say that. Now, I will also say, I don't think that any of that shit actually happened. I think that she is one of the biggest scammers that we've seen this year, and I'm gonna go into exactly why. What I present to you today, that this is not an isolated incident of what that she did. She just uploaded this GoFundMe a day ago, or her friend did, or whatever, a day ago. But what if I told you that she did another GoFundMe three years ago with similar circumstances surrounded about this? 
Gail at Night, again, another YouTube content creator. Shout out to you, Gail. She wrote me this email. Let me read it right now. A couple of months before she posted the GoFundMe that we currently all see, she claimed to have a near Ahmad Arbery, Sean Reed experience. I'm going to bring this GoFundMe up on the screen here in a couple of quick seconds. Okay? When you think of Ahmad Arbery or Sean Reed, you think through the disrespect of black people who lost their lives and were actual victims of racism and white supremacy. It seems she was being her usual unruly self, being loud as well as disrespectful. Okay? Gail said that she posted a meme on her community tab. But again, just like in this situation, no police were called, no guns were drawn, and no one was hurt. So how could she say her experience was anything like Armad or Sean Reed? Okay? Now, the thing is, is that when I read something like this, I say... Oh, my God, she's using a playbook from BLM, from Black Lives Matter. She's an LGBTQA alphabet soup, rainbow color, that's utilizing what the lesbian women that run BLM, Black Lives Matter, have done. They've utilized components of actual real things that have happened, allegedly, okay, and they profited off of it. This woman, Bricked Baby is utilizing these stories to profit off of it. All she's doing is utilizing the, the playbook of those from BLM. Okay? Gail then follows up. I can't find her TikTok. I think it was taken, I think it was taken down, but you already have the clips about the trans women and how worthless black men are. Uh, she's an American, uh, how trans women look better than American black women. She's a Somalian, claims to be Muslim. Isn't she a single mother? Uh, and, and lesbian. Like, how's she Muslim, a single mother, and a lesbian? How, like, yo, the West is so crazy. <laughs> Bricks down into the chat. She ain't hit the wall, she hit the bricked wall. You understand me? It seems she tried to hijack the American black experience when it's convenient and make up stories of police brutality, then turn around and talk down to on black American men and women. She's literally playing in the face while many of us are still defending her. Okay. Let's go over her GoFundMe back in 2020. Matter of fact, before we go over her GoFundMe, let's look at the actual article that was written about her and her experience, which led to the GoFundMe. Doctoral student shares her near Ahmad Arbery, Sean Reed experience. Speaking from the perspective as a black person, a woman, a Somalian, a refugee, Rhoda says black people have earned the right to defend themselves. Oh God, here we go. What color defines Rhoda? Black. Black is my favorite color because I consider myself black and so much of my life experiences are wrapped up in my color, my spirit, my joy comes from my blackness. I feel as though I have great insight into my life because of my blackness. There are layers to my blackness, yada, yada. I am aesthetically a black person. Then on top of racism, that is, there is xenophobia. Okay, here she goes with this phobia fucking talk. The fact that I'm a refugee offends people as well. Shut up. This country was not supposed to take was not supposed to take me in, they think, then I'm a woman. Shut up. God damn it, the victim. The goddamn fucking victim. You are a scammer. She's a scammer. This shit takes it to the new, to the next level. I talk about this platform about women utilizing their victim stat status to continue to act like they're more oppressed than what they actually are. This chick utilizes it for profit and she starts goddamn GoFundMe's to fund her goddamn lifestyle, and her being a single mother. The fact that I'm a refugee offends people as well. Shut up. Uh, then I'm a woman. Shut up. The only people I don't feel oppressed by are other black women. So, But you talk shit on other black women. You say trans women do it better than black women. Oh, okay. But I choose black. I'm so grateful to be black. I am a scammer. Give me your money. Give me your GoFundMe. I'm going to utilize my oppression to make money. Give it to me. Give it to me now. 
I am a single mother. Don't you understand how goddamn hard that it is? Don't you understand how goddamn hard that it is to have laid on my back and got coming? So now because I am a mother, I need help. I need goddamn help. As I laid here in this goddamn tunnel, she woke up in the morning and said, <laughs> I ain't shit. Hold on. I, I, I ain't shit. All right. I've, uh. <laughs> that was too far, MTR. Shut up. Okay. The bun on, on, on her head had nothing to do with any of this. Okay. I am a single mother. My forehead is massive. But my intellect is great. My shirt is dirty, but never mind that. I'm going to utilize the money from the GoFundMe in order to buy a new black shirt because this one's covered in shit and dust. Rhoda Osman is a 29-year-old doctoral student. Mind you, this is back in 2020. Okay. Uh, 29-year-old doctoral story curly, currently residing in Texas. Months back, she entered a dollar store and experienced... <laughs> What she described as yet another day of <laughs> of being a black person, a civilian, and a woman. Oh my God, the victim Olympics. Oh, it is so cringe. Yo, she's a mother. If she has a son, the boy has no chance. The boy is gonna grow up being a feminist. He's gonna grow up being a, a walking pillow cushion. He's going to grow up wearing black nail polish. Oh, my God. Uh, I have been living in Texas for over a year, and I've had the police call to me three times. Three fucking times. I'm pretty sure I would live in Texas and have the cops call to me none. No times. I'm pretty sure that I can have that accomplished, ma'am. What are you doing? Negativity seems to follow you, but you seem to always blame everyone else for your malarkey. You blame everyone else for your bullshit. Let's proceed. The incident is currently posted on her Instagram page strewn with both positive, oh, excuse me, strewn with both supportive and racist comments from viewers. What a clown. Some comments told Osman she should have known better than to move to Texas, possibly claiming Texas as a bigoted state. Additional comments advanced President Donald Trump's build that wall rhetoric, while others shared supportive messages towards Osman. The issue at hand in the dollar store, Osman was speaking her native language during a phone call with her sister. Apparently, she took a, a picture of this man with his hands crossed in a very pensive, passive state. And then she wrote this in her IG. I was shopping at a Dollar Tree speaking Somali to my sister when I noticed a Karen staring at me suspiciously. I paid her dust like I always do the girls, but then I was effing literally shaking towards the end. Check the phone focus. This chick is so crazy. The important thing is I was physically safe. Too many black people die because of Karens who refuse to let us live in a society that refuses to give us the benefit of the doubt and the public empathy we so often and easily give everyone. This is the same young woman that walked up to this guy and slapped him in his face. This is the same woman. She has issues. She has problems. And she's a liar. I walked into the store and I was there one minute in the aisle, aisle with the elderly white woman, Osmond said. It was then that I got off the phone and a manager approached me and told me that they received complaints. I was swearing in the store. How did she go from speaking to her sister in her na native language to then people complaining that she was cussing in the store? What? No accountability. Just driving the narrative that he's coming up to me because I'm black which is so weak, not because you're cussing in the store. As Asmin recalls it, the manager stated, I heard you were using profanity. 
Osman was stunned to hear that because she was speaking, speaking in a completely different language as she explains it. The incident began to escalate as the app manager then followed her around the store. When I finished shopping, I was then approached the line to pay. Security walked up to me and told me to leave because apparently I was swearing while on the phone. For her, it was an unfamiliar feeling, and Osman puts it, the manager and the security guard weighed the claim of another individual in the store over her own. They were willing to protect this person who had more rights than me. There should be no hierarchy, Osman said. Eventually, the manager admitted she did not hear Osman use profanity. Still, the manager's demeanor worsened, and the situation continued to spiral. Because when black people are on the right, that becomes its own problem, the manager the manager changed the narrative and made it about giving an attitude. Again, read all of this, but also understand her behavior in the last videos that we watched about her. She's fundamentally insane, and she will absolutely make up any story in order to push a narrative. Mind you, she's trying to go viral. She's trying to get in the news. She's trying to get popping. She's trying to get popular. This is what she prioritizes. Was there a police report here? Is there any documentation? Is there? Or is this her talking to some website that back in 2020 wanted to jump on the back of the cultural narrative? As a blah woman, the belief others have is that they can bulldoze and harass me, but she couldn't when I was speaking in my own language. As a result, the individual in the dollar store took matters into her own own hands so think about this situation happens to you you create your own story you get interviewed for it the interview paints you as the heroine so you're incentivized to do it again then you set up a GoFundMe and receive money for your heroism incentivizing you to do it again could it be that what happened a couple of days ago was written in stone back in 2020 when she realized that she can profit off of scamming, that she can profit off of lies. The manager and the security guard's expectation was we're going to harass her until she yells, screams, or more, making room for them to react however they saw fit. Oh, my God. What they're probably going to do for the rest of this art article is compare her situation to Armand Arbery, which is completely despicable, which is completely abhorrent. Which is so goddamn crazy. What's crazy about this, when I saw Brunswick, I thought New Brunswick, which is in New Jersey, which is, you know, we like to call components of New Jersey Brick City. <laughs> That's not funny. Stop laughing, everybody. So what happened after this? Go fund me! <laughs> I swear for God. You can't make this shit up! Help black Muslim mother pay her medical bill! Okay. This one didn't go as viral, but she met her goal. $4,850 at a $5,100 goal. A young black Muslim single mother was viciously assaulted by private security in Minneapolis, sustaining multiple facial contusions, a black eye, and injuries to her leg and back. She needs an estimated $5,000 to pay for medical expenses, legal fees, a new phone, and more. Please donate if able. Support and share. Thank you. If donating through GoFundMe does not work, you can please send the funds to XYZ ABC. Thank you to everybody that's donated so far and shared with their networks. We're almost halfway there, so please keep on sharing. Now that I read this over again, this actually doesn't look connected to the story that I just read. But what this seems is, is that this woman has a history of bullshit. She has a history of lies. She has a history of of making shit up, starting GoFundMes, and getting money. We live in an odd time nowadays. We live in a time where bad behavior, especially when it looks at and examines women, has no consequences. And in fact, those that exhibit bad behaviors are incentivized to do it. Because she earned $5,000 from doing it here, and then guess what that turned into? $35,000 after going viral, after getting bricked. Hey.